guys would like to pick up either of the figures you see in today's video, guys, go over to ringsidecollectiblesrestlingfigures.com. Use the promo code MDTOYS. You will save 10%. You can get in on all their epic sales, and you can pick up tons and tons of epic action figures, including both figures you see in today's video, as well as many other play sets, accessories, and things to add to your WWE action figure collection. What is good everybody? Welcome to an Epic My Damn Toys video. Today we have a 2-in-1 Ultimate Edition action figure review on the brand new WWE Ultimate Edition Finn Balor and Triple H. I'm super duper excited. I said super duper. What the hell was that? But I am freaking ready for these figures, man. They look incredible. I have been waiting for this Finn Balor for a while. The Triple H looks amazing as well. I do actually have both of these figures in my collection already, but they are customs and they are not Ultimate Edition. Edition. So I'm very excited to add these Ultimate Editions. I'm ready to dive in, take a closer look at the head sculpts that look incredible. You know, get to see if these torsos actually are as atrocious as they look. And just break down everything about these figures, man. I freaking love the interchangeable head sculpts. I love the Triple H. We finally get a freaking corporation Triple H. We get the SummerSlam 2018 Demon. And I'm just freaking hyped, man. So let's just go ahead and break into it, guys. You can see the front viewing window of Finn and Triple H here. If we spin it to the right, you will see beautiful images of Finn and Triple H. This actually was an image on Shut Your Mouth and Here Comes the Pain or one or the other. It was a loading screen. I remember this image. It's a promo image from a long, long time ago. And I'll pull that up on the screen if I can, if I can freaking find it. But I just always remember that being iconic. He's like to the side. I think he's like missing wrist tape or something. I, I just remember this. Or maybe he just doesn't have elbow pads or something. There's, there's something about this image that always stood out to me. So I wanted to I wanted to plug that in for you guys. We, of course, have the beautiful demon here. On the back, we do get some beautiful product shots. They always do a fun job of this. You got a beautiful product shot of Finn. Beautiful product shot of Triple H. You got some little info right there. You have a little bio read. And my God, can you even? read if you like to read Finn Balor's you can pause it now and then maybe you can read Triple H's I'm not freaking sure but right here you have an old picture of Triple H with the chain metal going around his neck there you got a picture of the demon here I think he took on Trash Corbin in this attire am I right spinning it around you have their names here Finn Balor and Triple H you don't have a lot on the top of the packaging or the bottom so that pretty much does it for Finn Balor and Triple H Ultimate Edition packaging guys so now that we have done that let's go ahead and crack them out of their packaging so here's the Demon Finn Balor and the game Triple H out of their packaging. Guys, looking pretty freaking swell. You know, I gotta say, they do look good. I'm not a big fan of how the torso looks, though. Specifically on Triple H, it just kind of looks awful. It kind of reminds me of that Jax figure that came out a while back. You guys remember those. If you guys don't remember those, they weren't very good. That's what that, that torso kind of reminds me of. But they look good. You know, the paint apps are nice. The face scans are really nice. I enjoy them so far. I do have some gripes about the figures, but there are some things that I really enjoy and we're going to get into all of that here today in the Ultimate Edition review here of Finn Balor and Triple H. So what we're going to do first guys is we're going to take a closer look at Triple H's accessories and then Triple H and then we'll come back and take a closer look at my boy Finn Balor's accessories and then Finn Balor. So with that being said guys, let's get into Triple H's accessories. So getting into Triple H's accessories guys, starting off with this right here. You do have the little chain metal here that goes around his neck. I do believe he did wear this for a short time but I don't think that you know it was very very iconic iconic, but I do know that he did wear this. You can see him on the back of the packaging here wearing this, and it's pretty nice. I don't know if it's, you know, good enough to come with the figure. Maybe, you know, I, I don't really know what they could have done, but it is nice to have. I think it's pretty cool to have. If it was, you know, full chain and, you know, not just a rubber piece with some texture to it, um, I think that it would be a lot better. However, you know, it is nice. It does have a nice texture to it. I like the paint apps going on with this, and I think it's pretty cool. You know, it looks cool on the figure, so I, I can agree with that. You know, it looks good. Maybe throw it on a different figure, and things of that nature. So there is that. With the Triple H figure, you also get the WWF Championship, which is probably one of my favorite championship designs of all time. It's just the one that I grew up with when I first initially started watching wrestling. And it's just super iconic. It looks so clean. It looks great. And it even looks beautiful in figure form. One of the better looking figure belts, if you will, as, as well as in real life. So they do include that. You know, around this time, he was WWF Champion, so I can appreciate this. He does look iconic with this championship. Up next, guys, 
what would Triple H be without his signature sledgehammer? We have seen the sledgehammer many, many times with Triple H figures. We've seen it with other figures as well, and it just looks so good. You know, I think they do a good job of replicating it. I really like the gunmetal grayish color going on on the head, and we've seen this a million times, so I'm not going to spend too much time on it, but they do include the sledgehammer. And what would a Triple H figure be without his signature water bottle? Guys, obviously, this is his entrance water bottle. He always came out with a water bottle. He'd pour it over his head, and then he'd drink some and spit it everywhere. One of my favorite entrances, I think his whole entrance, just like the Undertaker, guys, is just so iconic. The water bottle is just an iconic symbol, and it is uh, what he, he's known for, man. It's just like one of his things. It's like Undertaker's hat, if you will. Maybe not as iconic, but you could still tie it to Triple H. The water bottle, man, that is freaking beautiful, and I love Triple H's entrance theme. I love his entrance. I think it's one of the best of all time in wrestling. Next up, guys, we have his hat from around this time, and I, th I don't know if this goes on every single head sculpt, but I think it does go with this head sculpt, and it looks really good on this head. I think it looks just like Triple H from that time. Would you just look at this? My God, I think one thing I would like to do is add the logo. I do know that he had the logo on there at one time. I don't know exactly. And he also, there was actually one of these uh, ring-worn hats just like this on eBay with the logo autographed by Triple H that was on eBay. I don't know if it's still on there, but this looks just like a young Triple H from around the early 2000s, man. That looks freaking beautiful. Late 90s, early 2000s. This is just, this is money team Triple H. Looks just like him. I do want to test the other heads real quick, uh, plugging this on here. So, yeah, you can. I think he can wear it on all three head sculpts. I think it just looks the best on that last one. Yeah, that, that doesn't look the best. Not a big fan of how that looks right there. And then we can put it on the head sculpt that uh, is on the figure right now. So you have the head sculpt right here. You just kind of plug that on. The, yeah, it kind of raises up. Okay, it's not terrible. It doesn't look terrible, but I think this is the one that it's supposed to go on. It just, if, to be honest, it looks the best on this one. So I can appreciate that. So that is his signature hat. We also have the head sculpts that we just talked about, and you have your screaming head sculpt, which I really like. I think it does look like Triple H, and we do have a head sculpt that's similar to this that I'll get into, and then we have just the straight face Triple H looking slightly to the left, and I like both of them. I think the hair sculpt is nice. I think the beard paint job is well. I, I really like these. I think they do look like Triple H, and then, of course, you have the one that comes out of the packaging that we will get into as well on the next segment of the video. And the last accessories that's come with this figure guys are some DX suck it hands. This is what this is supposed to be I'm pretty sure. You obviously know that they do the crotch chop and tell other people to suck it. So what would a Triple H figure be without that? We also have interchangeable fists that we've seen before and it, out of the packaging he does come with water bottle slash sledgehammer slash mic holding hands. So those are always great to have. And if you guys wanted to see what the head sculpts look like on the figure you just pop this off like every other Ultimate Edition figure and you take the other head sculpt and you just plug it on like so, and you snap the neck peg. I'm just kidding, I didn't snap the neck peg, but that, wouldn't that be just terrible? But there is, is that on there? Doesn't seem like it's on there, but yeah, that's how, that's pretty much how it goes. You pop it on, and you pop it off. But that pretty much does it for Triple H's accessories, guys, so with that being said, let's dive into Triple H himself. So getting into Triple H himself, guys, you will see here we have this beautiful looking head sculpt, and we're gonna compare it to Triple H himself, and I think it does look like Triple H from around that time, that pissed off Triple H face. You know, he's not grimacing or anything, but he just looks pissed off. He kind of looks like how he first comes out. Looks good here. You can kind of compare it to here as well. And I think it looks great, man. I really do appreciate it. I think the hair length is nice. I like the hair color going on. You know, that lightish brown color looks very good. Going around, you have the nice sculpted torso and everything. Again, I'm not big on these torsos. We are going to do an articulation segment after this before we get into the elite figure comparisons. And we will break down all of the articulation, kind of breaking it down compared to an elite and everything like that. So spinning it around, you guys will see the back of the hair. I think it looks good as well. Into the arms, guys, we do get the elbow pads, and one thing that does suck is it does not come with open elbow pads, as you can see here. That's kind of unfortunate. I would have really liked to seen open elbow pads. You know, that used to be iconic with a lot of guys, and I feel like we don't ever get open elbow pads anymore. Those are like a thing of the past. They don't really include open elbow pads anymore, so that's pretty unfortunate. I would love to see those come back. Going out into the trunks, one of my favorite trunks designs of all time, man. If that ain't late 90s, early 2000s Triple H right there, man, I freaking love this logo. Very iconic logo. I always like the silver. I may get another one of these and paint that in gold to get that power trip look when he was running around with Stone Cold Steve Austin as World Tag Team Champion. I really enjoy that. That is just freaking beautiful, man. I, again, I have a custom of this hand painted, but I just love seeing it Mattel factory made here in the silver color. Looks fantastic. Going down to the legs, you have the big legs. You have the smaller knee pads, which is very, very shocking. You know, we only get the smaller knee pads when they usually have painted thighs or painted knees underneath because you guys know that's very iconic with Triple H as well. He 
doesn't have his knee brace. He doesn't have any of that. So I guess this is before he started taping his knees and having his knee brace. But uh, I feel like he always had that knee brace. After he, you know, hurt himself, he used to tape up this leg and then have the knee brace going on. But going down into the boots, we have the solid black boots that Triple H always wears. And we get our little toe articulation right there, which is very nice. And that is pretty much it for our Triple H, man. I mean, not, not too crazy. Nothing too wild going on with this like we have with Finn Balor, which we'll get into with all the paint detail and stuff. But that pretty much does it for our Triple H figure, guys. So now what we're going to do is let's go ahead and break down the articulation of Triple H, and then we will get into some elite Triple H figure comparisons. So getting into the articulation of this figure, guys, you will see that looking up, he can't really look up that far. That's about it right there. He does have some sort of head tilting slash pivoting right there, which is pretty good. He can't look down that great, but he can look down a little bit. The ab crunch is about like that, and we're going to compare this to an Elite right now so we can see how well this ab crunch is compared to an Elite figure. So this is what the Ultimate Edition looks like crunched all the way forward. And here's a Triple H Elite figure, and this is what it looks like crunched all the way forward. And you guys can compare here. And I think that an Elite actually crunches forward better. It actually does have a slight hunch, and uh, it can crunch forward a little bit better. If we compare it to back ways, this is what the back would look like, and you guys can see there he can lean back pretty decently, and we're going to compare that to an Elite again, but I don't think that it's as good as an Elite. I think the Elite does crunch back, or yeah, the, the Elite crunches back wet, much better. I mean, that's, I, I just don't understand why do we, we pay more for it for the double joint arms and accessories, but why do we get this torso, man? Just use an Elite torso, and it would have better articulation and it would look better. So there you go. There's your comparison on that, but now we're going to go get into the rest of the articulation on this Ultimate Edition. So the arms do go out all the way like like that actually above 90 degrees so that's very nice to have you can full rotate here you get a bicep swivel you get double jointed arms and we're gonna pull the knee pad or the elbow pad down and it actually feels like this elbow pad is made of a softer plastic than the or a softer rubber than uh, it usually has so maybe they've done that so that you know you can bend the arms better yeah dude that's not nearly as solid as they've been in the past so I guess they're working on making this softer so that you know we can bend the arms and things of that nature better but there is the double jointed arm he can actually drink his water bottle during the entrance. He can pour it on his head. He can hit himself in the face with a sledgehammer. Why don't all elites have double jointed arms? I know it's probably not in the budget, but God, give me that, man. Just give me that. Actually, just sell packs of individual double jointed arms and let people buy them to plug onto their figures. Make them in all different molds. Somebody out there, somebody out there make double jointed arms for everybody. Look at that right there, man. That would make elites just 25 times better, man. We got to get double jointed arms. I freaking love that, man. I'll, that'll never get old. I freaking love having double jointed arms. Makes pick fetting, makes posing, makes everything much better. For his wrist, guys, he does have a hinge that goes up and down, and you can rotate it. He does have waist swivel. He has this diaphragm joint that's pretty cool. I do like this, and you cannot get this in an elite, so that's something to take note of. You do not get this on an elite figure, so you can rock it back and forth. His legs can spread all the way out. Does he have ball joints? He does have ball joints. All Triple H figures do have ball joints. You get upper thigh cut. You get the double jointed knees, just like we get with all elite figures. You get the boot swivel and you get ankle pivot nah, you get a very small ankle pivot nothing crazy and he does get a little toe pivot there so that's very nice little little hinge for the toe joint so that is all the articulation for the triple h figure guys so you guys can kind of tell what it looks like i think i am going to torso swap this with an elite just so i can have you know a better looking version of this and i am going to compare this figure right now to my elite corporation triple h and you guys can see here uh same logo on the trunks. This was actually hand painted by Showstopper Custom Fig, so if you guys can believe that, that's immaculate. But you guys can kind of see, it looks pretty much identical. You know, everything is pretty much the John Brown same, which I do appreciate. That's how good Showstopper Custom Figs is, and that's how nice this Mattel figure is. But you guys can see, I love this head scan much better. I am going to switch out this torso. I think this torso would look much better on this figure. And, you know, we'll have the double jointed arms and things of that nature. Going down, here's the knee brace and the painted on leg there. And actually, you could switch that out. You could switch this out for a Triple H thigh with white tape on it, so that wouldn't be a big deal. And you could easily swap the knee pad over here, or not the knee pad, but the knee brace if you wanted to. And you could switch on larger knee pads, but... 
I appreciate the smaller ones for better articulation, and you obviously don't get toe pivot with your uh, Elite figure. So that is pretty much it, guys. You can kind of just see the difference there. He also has his water bottle, but I do love my Elite figure comparison here, but I do love the Ultimate Edition as well. So that is it for your Elite figure comparison. So now that we have covered Triple H, guys, let's dive into Finn Balor's accessories. So with the Demon King Finn Balor, guys, you don't get nearly as much as you get with Triple H, but I enjoy him a lot. I love the accessories we do get. Starting off with the head sculpt, you do get this beautiful looking Finn Balor demon tongue out the face looking head sculpt from SummerSlam 2018. Is that paint chipping on his right bottom cheek? I'm going to have to totally fix that bull crap. But you guys can see it does look like Finn. I think it does look good. I think it looks much better than the Elite 70 head sculpt that we had. And uh, I, I like this a lot. I really do enjoy this and I cannot wait to pop this onto the figure and see what it looks like on the figure. We are going to do a little shot. Once I go through all the accessories, we're going to plug all of the accessories onto Finn and kind of see what he looks like in all his entrance gear since we haven't seen that just yet and I did want to take a look at that but I really love this I love the sculpt going on the beard looks nice the tongue looks great and I think we have to give a huge shout out to BEW which we'll take a closer look at in this video of his custom Finn Balor when he hand sculpted the tongue and the bottom jaw and everything on that so we are going to take a closer look at that but not only that you do get the interchangeable hands and I freaking love this you know uh, he did that little thing I think he like jumped through the ropes I think he did a tope con Hilo or he took out Trash Corbin and then he put his uh, teeth up to his mouth and it kind of looked like a demon, you know, and he stuck his tongue out. I hope with the double jointed arms we were able to do that pose. We're going to find out. Uh. These look beautiful. I love the teeth and the tape going on on the hands with the red coming off. That looks freaking excellent. The mic holding hands look great. We also get the headgear and the wrist gauntlets for the demon and they actually did not mold this in plastic. They did it in a soft rubber material so that they're kind of malleable and movable so that you don't have them all stiff whiffy and you know just sticking straight out they actually have some flow to them not completely flowy but they are a lot better than they were in the past you guys remember with the elite 41 Finn Balor or the elite 40 I think it was elite 41 that we got way back when uh, they were super stiff and they didn't have any sort of movement to them they were really stiff and you could easily snap them in half we also get a beautiful headdress and the headdress looks better than I think it ever has and I don't know if it's because it's painted differently or this is a new sculpt but it looks like it's a new sculpt it just kind of feels better and more grand and it kind of feels like a headdress. It's kind of weird to say but it feels and looks a lot better than it has in the past and we're going to see what this looks like on the on the figure when we cover all the accessories but what would the Demon King be without his iconic headdress? And then the last thing we have guys is his little skirt entrance gear that he has and it's just like a red skirt thing. that It's like a waist wrap I guess you could say and it does have some Velcro right here and it hooks around his waist and you just Velcro it like we've seen with all the t-shirts and other things in the past and we are going to see what all this looks like on the figure right now and you guys already saw how you interchange the head so what we're going to do now is take a closer look at the demon king with all of his accessories on and then we will take an in-depth look himself at the demon king so here is my boy the demon king in his freaking entrance gear man looking like a boss i freaking love this i think it looks fantastic again there are some gripes about it which we'll get into but man oh man there's some things about this figure that i did not know had going on which will break down in all of the segments uh in the articulation segment will break down everything in between but man he looks so badassery man this looks great in figure form Finn Balor probably being my favorite current wrestler of the time I, I just love this man I think it looks so freaking epic and iconic like look at just the demon man this this just looks so good it looks just like Finn did at SummerSlam 2018 when he took out Trash Corbin in like six seconds and the demon just totally crushed his soul so I freaking miss the demon I miss Finn Balor man I can't wait for him to come back and destroy the fiend I highly doubt they do that but they need to man come on and it just sucks again we don't have Finn Balor in the pick fed so you know I can't just use this figure and it's just like farts in a bag one thing I will say which we will get it you know what I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna wait till the articulation segment but I, I love this man in the entrance gear just up on the shelf I need a couple of these I'm gonna have to buy a couple of these but I'll probably wait till the price drops a little bit on this guy if it ever drops man Finn Balor in the entrance gear man this, this looks freaking beautiful this this is epic sauce but now that we've broken down that guys let's get into Finn Balor himself 
himself without any accessories. We're going to take a closer look at all the details of this Ultimate Edition Finn Balor figure. So taking a closer look at my boy Finn Balor, guys, we're going to get up in here. You guys will see here. This is the other head sculpt that comes with the figure, the one without the tongue sticking out. And I think it looks good. I will say there's a bit more red than I like right here on the right eye, which I can easily touch up. That's not a big deal to me. Again, I can easily just fix that up and touch that up. But I like what we got going on. I think the sculpt is very nice. The likeness to Finn Balor's there. And I don't think this is the Elite 70 Finn Balor head sculpt. I think it looks a lot better than that. And I don't know if you painted this up in skin tone. It probably looked just the same. Kind of looks like the hair sculpt is the same as that figure as well. But I do think it is a little bit different. Or maybe the paint apps make it look a little bit different. Or maybe the eyes, the way they painted the eyes look a little bit different. I'm not sure. But I don't think it's the exact same. Nonetheless, guys, going down into the chest, I think they nailed this paint work. I think it looks great. The tongue and the teeth and the black. I actually have a, a custom of this, which we're going to compare to with BEW, and I think that BEW's paintwork does hold up to Mattel. I think it does look just as good. Moving up the torso, you do see that they continue the paint job, so hats off to Mattel for doing that and not just being lazy and cutting off the paint job right there. Spinning them around, you do get some beautiful paintwork on the back. It's like this black hole of teeth going all around, and I don't know why that reminds me of like it or Jaws on the back with all the mini rows of teeth. With the black going on, you also get the paint on the back of the neck. One of my favorite demon paints, I think. I think it's just very nice. It, it just looks so clean. Another one that we never got was SummerSlam 2017, I think, when Finn Balor took out. Was it Bray Wyatt? I can't remember who he fought, but he uh, he looked great in that attire as well. Really wish we got that in demon form. But going down to the arms, you got the continued paint onto the shoulders. You have these beautiful red wraps that he has on his arms. Like It's like the red tape that he puts around his arms, and he has worn this with a few demons now, so I think that's pretty cool. We finally got that on an elite figure. You could pop these arms off and probably put it on a different demon if you wanted to. In the hands, we already discussed with the interchangeable hands, but you do have this little teeth designs going on with the red, which I really enjoy. And I didn't show you guys, but they do have these interchangeable hands as well, and it's kind of like the uh, the, the promo graphic that he had, and this is actually, I think this is supposed to be the hands where he's showing off the teeth, but I'm not sure. I tried to do that. I'll, I'll show you guys that in the articulation portion of the video where we try to mimic that, that motion, and we will get into that, but I really like these hands. You could also use them as crawling hands if you wanted. Going down to the trunks, I really like the flame pattern we got going on. Very basic, but black trunks with the flame design there, and on the back you have the same flame sort of demon design going on there, so you have those two in red. In the legs you have his regular knee pads with the five different teeth, and this is something I, that just sucks eggs. It's like there's a little gap there between these teeth, so this is how it's supposed to look, but they did add like an extra gap right there, and I don't think that's accurate. I'm pretty sure that it's supposed to look like that, and on the back of the packaging over here, the, the right knee pad looks a lot better than mine, so maybe it's just a factory error, but I'll probably order another one or two of these figures, so I'm sure I'll probably get a knee pad that looks good eventually. Lower legs are molded in black, which I like. It gives it a better look. It, it gives him that taped knees look that Finn Balor always wears, and you have solid black kick pads. He does not have the details in his shoes. Would have been nice for the Ultimate Edition, but I, I can understand it and everything. I like the kick pad mold. This is actually a newer kick pad mold. It's not quite what his kick pads usually look like, and he doesn't have anything on the back. And, uh, yeah, you get your beautiful little toe pivot hinge thing. So what we're going to do now, guys, is get into the articulation segment of the video where we break down all the articulation, and then we will get into the Elite Figure Comparison where we showcase what this figure looks like up next to the custom SummerSlam 2018 by BEW. So for the articulation of this guy, he can look up pretty decent. He can look up better than Triple H probably because of the hair. He can look down a decent amount. He does have some nice head pivoting slash tilting there, so I can appreciate that. He can look all the way around if you want to do the exorcism. On the torso, though, he cannot crunch forward very far at all, man, and that's super unfortunate because this is Finn Balor, man. This is freaking Finn Balor. This is Finn Balor. That's as good as he can crunch forward, man. That's that's not good. That's not good, and I think I, it has to do with this torso, man. I, I don't like these torsos. Like, do they hide articulation pretty well? Yeah, as far as this torso. The Triple H doesn't really hide it that well, but compared to an Elite, man, that's not very good at all. This is what the Elite Finn Balor can do. So this is the Elite Finn Balor compared to the Ultimate Edition crunching forward. That's that's kind of unacceptable, if you ask me. Like, look how big of a difference that is. That That's just upsetting. So that is the crunch forward. Now we're going to take a look at the crunch backwards, and the crunch backwards is better than the forwards, but it's still not... I, I still don't like it as much as the Elite. I think the Elite still kills it, or at least it, it still beats it. It's still, it definitely still beats it. The BEW Elite Finn Balor can definitely uh, crack backwards there, and it looks it looks better, man. That, that's that got to change. Like, this is an Ultimate Edition figure, and he can't even crunch his abs, so that, that just sucks, man. And it's not like you can just switch his torso out with Elite Finn Balor, because then you lose all of this beautiful paint 
detail, so that's unfortunate. And you could say, well, Trey, why don't you just switch out your custom? I don't want to switch out my custom BEW torso for this one. That's that's dumb, man. I, I want to be able to use this one, you know? I, I'll probably end up using these arms for a custom or a fix-up or something, but I did want to keep one original like it is in the entrance gear, so that will not be taking place. As far as the arms go, you do get the full 360. Um, one thing I will say is these bands, just like the Ultimate Warrior, the armbands are actually removable, I think. Yeah, you can remove these armbands here. You can actually pluck that out right there. And uh, you guys can see it there. I don't want to pull it all the way out, but you can pull it out. You know what? F it. You can pull it all the way out, and it's just like Ultimate Warrior. You can unplug that and then plug that back in, and it's going to be a whore bag to get back in. It's kind of why I didn't want to do it. The only way to get that back in, I did have to take it off the figure. So if you want to get that off, these are removable, by the way. You can take these armbands off the arms. Another thing about the articulation, guys, is like moving the arms all the way down. This is about as far as you can go. I think if you remove these armbands, you could probably move it down a little bit more, but I had a problem when I was reaching the arm up, the arm wanted to pop out sometimes, and I don't know why they made these arms removable. It's kind of like they kit bashed all these figures, so maybe the Triple H is that way as well. You could like pop out the shoulders. I don't know exactly why they did that, but that's kind of annoying to me, but I guess it makes it easier to put these arms into a different torso if you wanted to crack it. I don't know, but as far as the double jointed arms goes, guys, this is kind of what we're dealing with. You can, you know, do the double jointed arms, and what he did is he put the fists up to his mouth like this at SummerSlam, and this is kind of what we were going for, but I think it's like the way they molded the hands, it kind of looks off. It's not perfect by any means. If I sat here and tried my best, I might could get it to work, but I mean, that's pretty close. That's definitely way better than Elite could do, and you guys can see the teeth are coming out of the face there, so I think that's about what Finn Balor was doing, and I can pull up a picture there and kind of compare. I mean, that's pretty close. If it's not identical, it's definitely there, and it's in the realm of possibility, so if you guys played around with it, tried to get a photo or something, I think you could make it happen, so that's beautiful. I really enjoy that, and uh, the double-jointed arms are just so nice, man. He can grab his head. He can do all kinds of things, and I, I think we really do need double-jointed arms for all the leads. Let's start a petition, man. Let's get a petition going. Look at that right there. That is epic sauce. Double-jointed arms make the world go around, man. We need more of them. But not only that, guys, on the wrist gauntlets for the entrance gear, this is actually rotational as well, so it's just like, and you can't unplug this, just like the armbands on his biceps, so that is something to think about as well. I wanted to plug that in. You get a hinge up and down and you can rotate. This is where it sucks. I wish the legs were on ball joints so his legs wouldn't be so stiffy. I mean if you ran this in hot water or something it would definitely be a lot better but he kind of has that clicky legs at least on the right leg it's kind of that clicky sound that you get with like CM Punk figures and things of that nature so that's kind of unfortunate but I do like the right leg. The right leg feels a lot better. Double jointed knees. You get rotation at the kick pad. You get little ankle pivot and you get the little toe hinge and that pretty much does it for our Ultimate Edition Finn Balor articulation segment. So with that being said, guys, let's now compare this figure to the BEW Custom Elite SummerSlam 2018 Finn Balor. So for our comparison, guys, you will see the BEW Custom Elite SummerSlam figure on the right and the Ultimate Edition Finn Balor on the left. And obviously in the head sculpt, BEW did a fantastic job. However, it kind of just looks like he's looking up and he's not that pissed off. However, on the, you know, on the, the Crazed Ultimate Edition, it does look like he's like crazy and like the demon there and kind of angry. So I do appreciate that better. Uh, the paint apps is so amazing on the BEW. It's actually more detailed than the one that Mattel gave us with the, they have gray, he has gray tones and light pinks going through the gums and stuff. And I guess you have it here, but I really like BEW's paint job a little bit better, I think. I just think it has more detail, which I can understand. This is more factory and, you know, machine is printing off this Ultimate Edition. And on the back, you can see, again, he has the silver paint job going through, but he did a great job. I think both of them look great. He did a great job on the trunks as well. He has all of the stuff going around. It's it's pretty much identical. He used cloth for his bicep bands, which are nice, and it's just so cool, man. I use the knee pads for a different custom, so the, you can't compare the knee pads, but, but BEWs actually look better than the Mattel knee pads, and then on the kick pads, he did do solid black. So that is it for your Elite Figure comparison, guys. I, I really, I just, geez, man, if this had the articulation of this in the torso, man, it would be over with and this had maybe the double jointed arms it'd be it'd be freaking over with which you're gonna say well brad you could just put these arms over here yeah but you yeah, know this is this you risk paint chipping if you keep crunching this torso over and over so that's just something to definitely think about but that does it for your elite figure comparison on the SummerSlam 2018 finn balor guys so now let's go ahead and wrap up this video but yes ladies and gentlemen that about does it for this two-in-one wwe ultimate edition finn balor and triple h figure review i had a ton of fun posing these guys around and 
playing around with them with all the epic accessories we get, all the greatness looking around. If I had to pick one, guys, I would definitely pick Finn Balor if you wanted to pick up either one. If you had to choose, I would go with Finn Balor. I just freaking love it. You know, I'd probably have some biasness, but Triple H is one of my favorites of all time, so I don't call it that bias. I just think it's really epic with the interchangeable head sculpt, with the tongue sticking out, all the epic, you know, the, the freaking, look, I mean, look at the figure, man. Look at it. You can do the freaking teeth thing with his hands, and if that's not a selling point, I don't know what to tell you. I love the double jointed arms on both of these guys, and I actually recommend both of them. I think that maybe you may want to switch out the torso in Triple H. You unfortunately don't have that same luxury with Finn Balor, given that he has all that paint de detail on his torso, unless you would like to torso swap it with a t uh, top talents and then hand paint all of the design, which I don't think that a lot of people want to do. But I think of the Finn Balor is epic, man. Just look at it. It looks like a real life Finn Balor. I mean, just look, just, 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 just would you just look at it? I love it, man. I freaking love it. Even though the torso isn't the best, I think that the freaking arms are a selling point, man. The arms and the interchangeable head sculpts and just the way the figure looks, I mean, it's, it's, it's a hard sell, man. It looks great. Then again, you may not be as big of a Finn Balor fan as I am, which I can understand, but I, I, I love it. I freaking love it. So if you would like to pick up either of these figures, guys, go over to Ringside Collectibles, use the promo code MD Toys, save yourselves 10% to knock off some of that pricing. You may want to wait on these figures to come down in price a little bit. I would understand that. But if you want to go grab these, use the promo code MD Toys, you will save some money and that will knock off some of the price. But I think that is going to do it for this two in one figure review, guys. I had a blast again reviewing these and posing them around. I appreciate you guys watching this figure review all the way through. If you did, hit me with a My Damn Finn down below. Comment hashtag My Damn Finn or just comment My Damn Finn down below. I really appreciate it. You will get an automatic heart from me. I appreciate you guys for watching. Subscribe to the channel for more epic WWE figure videos. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at My Damn Toys, and I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you.